Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn that the word of truth by, as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is a, if what? It is obtained. We know that it is obtained by grace and by faith by all who what? Obey. By all who obey. If they do not obey, it is made manifest or made obvious that they do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. Your dog is all right, boy. Ain't nothing wrong with that darn dog. My dog ain't going to kill him. I'm not worried about my dog. Goodness gracious. That's what's wrong. In this state. In this state, they should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that they do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience they may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You still over there worried about your darn dog? You can't even sit darn still. Butter is not going to kill your dog. Do me a favor, can you turn on that heater? You know what I'm saying? Hey, over there bundled up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just, hit a, you know, just press the button until it goes to heat. Uh, Zahar. Book being preached. I don't see why you so darn loud. Ezra, shh. It's time to be quiet. Huh? Uh, just put it, you know, about like two points over whatever it is. Uh, Zahar. Yeah. Going into the room. Do me a favor. Keep everybody down, all right? What's up, son? <laughs> All right. Uh, where we starting, Danielle? Mm. Boy, you need a haircut. You got some money? What you got, Randy? Just pick a book, any book. Danielle, get the number. You got it? What we got? Uh, Matthew. Okay, we got Matthew. What else? Matthew 11, verse 20. Right, I thought she was about to say John 3, 16 is the one thing. Matthew eleven twenty. Is that what I think it is? What y'all y'all went over that Bible study? What Bible study? Matthew eleven twenty. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, Bible study is cool. What's Ain't cool? Matthew eleven twenty the? Uh, I didn't come for peace. Let me see what y'all talking about. Hold on. Johnson Middle School. Y'all have Bible study. Yeah. How's how's that work? Like after school? Yeah. After school program? What? Who teach it? Mr. Staples? Yeah. The Hebrew or Gentile? Stop it. Both of you are. What color is the skin? Filing my niece with him. Teach her stay out the book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boy, why are you always crying? Yeah. Matthew 11 20. It's Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Let's see what we're working with. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Then <laughs> began he to upgrade the cities where most of his What y'all doing reading this in Bible study? You know what I'm saying? What do you say? Amazing Grace Congregation Church? Congregation Church. Amazing Grace Ministry. What are they talking about upgrading? What they know about somebody being upgraded? You know what upgraded means? You know what though? You said Matthew eleven twenty, right? It must be a reason. Let's listen to it. Watch that. I didn't think your pastor went over there. The pastor, you know what I'm saying? They gonna go over some somebody being upright. I ain't never seen this pastor touch some upright. You know what that means? You know what that means? That means somebody getting chastised. Somebody getting uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like it's like when we yell at the kids. You know what I'm saying? Get your butt in that darn room. That's you know what I'm saying. That's a 
Yao Shua was up Brayton. They don't like to see Yao Shua like that. And they see Yao Shua. <laughs> I'm hanging from the cross and I'm waiting from you at the same time. I love you first. Right? You know what I'm saying? That's how they like, you know what I'm saying? They like to see him kind of like just weak and just vulnerable and all that. They don't like to see the man when he's sitting there. What in the world is y'all darn problem? Y'all some darn sinners. Watch what he said. He upbraided him. Watch what he said to him. Then he began to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done because they. He said he upbraided the cities where? Where most of his mighty works were done. See, he ain't, he ain't gonna go to no city where he ain't did nothing. Don't, don't nobody know where he is. He going to the place where like, oh, now I showed y'all the proof. I show, I gave y'all the proof. I gave y'all the evidence. And y'all still acting like y'all don't know? He said, y'all getting upbraided. Y'all getting chastised. Y'all gonna get a talking to. Right? Let's see. Because they repented not. Okay. Well, because of what? Hold on. Because what? They repented not. Randy, what does that mean when they say re they repented not? They didn't repent. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, That's Mackenzie, obvious. what does that mean when they say huh? they didn't repent? They didn't repent. Okay. Danielle, what does that mean? They didn't oh, repent. All right, hold on. Oh, Randy got it. Come back around. Okay. They didn't turn themselves around. Yeah. From? Sin. All right, there we go. How we know that? Ezekiel chapter 18. Let's see what we talking about. Everything we got, everything we got, we got to prove it out through the book. We can't just come up with something, right? If I just say that, they'd be like, oh, yeah, look at him leading them kids. Look, what's his name? Mr. What? Staples. Staples, he a pastor? That's so minister, what is the minister Staples? No. His first name is John. No, what's his, what's his name, though? Is Staples? That's his last name. Staples? Like, yeah, yeah, like stable, like stable and paper. All right, so you know what I'm saying? You got, you got, you got Mr. Staples, right? You know what I'm saying? Mr. Staples, you know what I mean? What was I about to say about Mr. Staples? Mr. Staples might look at this video and be like, I ain't teaching them that. Repent. You know what repent means? To Mr. Staples, I don't know Mr. Staples. I'm just saying it, it's a possibility that Mr. Staples think repent mean like feel sorry about what you did, cry about it a little bit, Ask for forgiveness to God, like that might be that might be repentance to him. So when I sit here and say no, repentance means turn away from sin. I may hear you, they turn around. I'm like no, 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 turn around from what sin. Then that puts a little bit extra on it. A lot of people that might make people feel uncomfortable, right? They're like, oh well, no, that's not how I learned. That's different from what I know, right? So now we got to okay. Now there's a disagreement. What can solve every disagreement? Book, right? What Paul tells us. That's a fact. What else he tell us though about dissolving every doubt, right? Yeah, right. Is that right is that Paul? The I can't think of where it is. Yeah, I want to say prophecy. Paul, but now somebody say something that is good enough to dissolve every doubt. Uh, all right, that's all right. We'll come back to that one. But at the end of the day, this book, this book, will fix it for us, right? So that's what we want to do. Now we're about to go to Ezekiel. We're gonna go to chapter eighteen. We're gonna go to the about. The last verse, like the last five verses, whatever that last five verses is. It's Ezekiel chapter 18. Is that my boy now? Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 27. Watch this. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Uh-huh. Because he considers and turns away from all his transgressions that he has committed. Uh -huh. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Uh -huh. Yet, says the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? He asked a question. Are not my ways fit, fair? My way, when they say equal, he talking about fair. Like, isn't, isn't it fair the way I got it set up? If a righteous man stop being righteous and he end up being wicked, most like God say, in my eyes, you wicked. But if a wicked man stop being righteous and ends up being uh, righteous, I mean, stop being wicked and ends up being righteous, then he going to look at him and be like, you righteous. He said, whatever you end up doing, whatever you do for the rest of your life, that's what you is. He's like, it's not my way. That ain't that fair. I forget you. I forget every one of your sins if you end up being righteous. And I forget every one of your righteousness if you end up being wicked. Aren't my ways fair? That's the question that he asked. And let's see.
Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. Why? Says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. From how many of them? All your transgressions. The ones that you see. All your transgressions. The ones that make you feel bad. Oh. The ones that you know about. Whole book trying to tell you all transgressions. So if it tell you to repent, guess what you got to do? Repent from how many of them? All your transgressions. I mean, just the one that somebody told you about. Because you know it's impossible to, I mean, you completely turn away from sin. I mean, you might just wake up tomorrow and sin without even knowing. Ain't that what they tell us? You can just wake up tomorrow and just sin without even knowing it. Oh, please, you can cut that stuff out. Books say all of us. What are we going to do with it? It put us in a place where we just have to look at ourselves. We say, look, I'm a sinner or I'm not. Period. One thing we can't do is convince ourselves that we're righteous when we're not. That puts us in a position where then... We are confused. If we convince ourselves of that, then there's no saving us. If you acknowledge, okay, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Now you got an opportunity. I can turn this thing around. Right? I can put myself in a position where we can move. We can change. If not, if you don't acknowledge that thing, what you going to do? You can vision, okay, let's, let's play that thing out, right? What I'm doing is okay. I'm good. I'm not a sinner. I'm a righteous man. God loves me. God has been with me this whole time. He's been walking with me this whole time. God loves me. He's walked by. First, it was two sets of footprints in the sand. Then it was one set of footprints in the sand. When times get hard, God don't walk with me. He carried me, man. That's a, that's a 50 cent lyric. Y'all wouldn't know nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all remember that song? First, it was two sets of footprints in the sand. Then it was one foot set prints. I mean, footprints in the sand. Times get hard and stuff hits the fan. God don't walk with me. He carried me, man. You remember that thing? Man, that sounds tight, bro. <laughs> 50 Cent used to kill them things. But anyway, 50 Cent a Christian, just like everybody else, right? So you look at it, and you he looking like, oh, God been with me the whole time. The whole time, this man rapping about killing folks, and selling drugs, and all this stuff, and still acting a fool, right? He almost 40 here. Maybe he is. He might be 40. You know what I'm saying? Still acting crazy. Right? His mind, God walking with him. So now he can't acknowledge, you know what? I'm a sinner and I'm about to go to hell if I don't change. So for him, he can go on Oprah and talk about his relationship with God, which he really did. He can go all these places. And for him, there's no convincing him that he needs to change because he's acknowledging his mind, his own mind. He made up his own mind that God is still with him. We can't be like that. If we in sin, we just got to be honest with ourselves. You know what? I'm in sin. Right? And I have to change. Otherwise, I'm going to end up in hell. It's the only thing for us. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Cast away from you all your transgressions, mm -hmm. whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Okay. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Mm -hmm. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God. He said he had no pleasure. No pleasure. Somebody got to get dark. Wolf. Therefore, turn yourselves and live ye. All right, let's go back. Where were we at? We was at Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. You said 20, TJ? Yep. No, that, wasn't me. that wasn't you? It was. Oh, sorry. That was you, huh? You got to be ashamed of yourself. It was. You should have saw in her face when you said it wasn't him. She... They yes, gonna... it was. <laughs> they gonna jump you, bro. <laughs> they be at the house thinking they can. You know, they put them bags up. I can't hit a knock because I'll just whoop on TJ twice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Make them think twice about that one, huh? This is, uh... <laughs> this is Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Uh, you see the Dudley brothers over there. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> it's Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Then began he to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Mm -hmm. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works were done and you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Right? When he say woe, when he say woe unto you, what does that mean? Who? Destruction. Destruction, right? 
He tells them destruction. That's why he's upbraiding them. He tells them destruction on y'all. If this stuff had been done in Tyre and Sidon, guess what these people would have been? They would have been in sackcloth and ashes. In other words, they would have been sitting here repenting. They would have been sorrowful for what they're doing and repenting and turning from it. He's like, but y'all, this stuff don't even move y'all. I'm here doing all these miracles telling y'all what's about to happen. This stuff don't even touch. Y'all just chilling. He's like, okay, woe well, unto you. Keep going. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Mm -hmm. And you, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. Mm -hmm. For if the mighty works which have been done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have repented until this. It would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. All right. So we look at that and we dealt with who last week. Who remembers what we talked about last week? Azariah, what you got? Who remember what we talked about last week? Randy, what we talked about? Oh, you came late. Remember we talked about Saul, right? So Saul came onto the scene. Samuel made Saul the king. After that, King Saul was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? He got big, you know what I'm saying? First, he's a young, meek man, you know what I'm saying? He is, you know what I'm saying? He is kind of witty, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was meek. He, he didn't think much of himself. You know what I'm saying? And after a while, he started, you know what I'm saying? He started feeling all the fame and, and feeling the pressure of like leading. Being a lot of pressure when it comes to leading people. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to kind of keep people in a mindset where it's like, we can do this, we can do this. So when it came down to it, he had a plan. Everybody believed in uh, Samuel. Samuel put out a plan. It looked like that plan wasn't going to happen the way Samuel said it. People started getting nervous. So he took it upon his own hands to make a sacrifice. When Samuel was supposed to be the one to make a sacrifice, and he was supposed to wait for Samuel to do so. So that was the first offense. Samuel was like, no, you didn't follow the commandment of God. The next time God told Saul to go out, he told him, take over the, uh, uh, the, Amalekites. the Amalekites. Right? Go get the Amalekites, wipe them all out, don't leave nothing, don't take no spoils. So what did the people do? They ended up taking the sheep. Saul didn't stop them from taking that, those sheep. You know what I'm saying? And then, instead of killing all the people, Saul spared the king. Right? He thought that was a good idea. So then Samuel had to come along, tell him, no, nah, that wasn't the right thing to do. You disobeyed the commandment. As a matter of fact, he walked away. Then he grabbed Samuel's shirt because, you know, he's frantic. Now he's like, no, no, no. Because remember, Samuel, all the people look at, look at Samuel like he the man. Samuel is precious, right? So all the people looking at Samuel like, you the one, right? You the man. So then when they look at that, they're like, okay, if Samuel end up walking away from Saul like in disapprovement, then what is that, where does that leave Saul? Are all the people going to reject Saul. So when Samuel walked away from him, Saul was scared because all the people were going to see. So he reached out to him and grabbed him by his shirt like, no, hold on. And he ended up ripping his shirt, right? Because he is frantic. He is ripping his shirt. So Samuel was like, oh, well, just like you ripped my shirt, the kingdom about to be ripped from you. And he kept moving. Samuel, that boy was smooth. Boy, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? The black mom and the black daddy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, can I get some candy? Yeah, you about to get some candy on that butt. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? Can I go outside? I'm about to go outside on that butt. That's how Sam, you know what I'm saying? We always, in Hebrew, we always can flip that thing around. Sam was like, uh-huh. Just like you ripped my shirt, the kingdom about to be ripped from your butt. That thing was done after that. He was like, oh, man, goodness gracious. He was like, well, at least just walk out with me then, right? So that's what we're about to pick up now. You know what I'm saying? Samuel's already made the decision because the Most High God has already told him that, uh, that, uh, that you know, the kingdom is going to be ripped from him and he's going to choose another man, right? So, let's go to uh, Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse uh, 1. Let me start at verse 1. It's 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. Right, Azariah? Yeah? Still the blanket? Okay, can I have some? Okay, I appreciate you. <coughs> Bless you. You want good Oh, thanks. Mm. Well, appreciate it. Uh, they say in your whole country, uh, uh, Konnichiwa. <laughs> it's funny. You said it's yours. I'm not going to say anything before you wouldn't know nothing about that. I don't know about that. They're just Hebrews out there. All right. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him? 
from reigning over Israel. Mm -hmm. Fill your horn with oil and go. Mm -hmm. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his, among his sons. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take your heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. As, see, okay, so pay attention to what Saul is important to pay attention to what's happening in the word. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you got when you ever got some word, like you have to write, you can't just like read it and just let that thing just like you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta really pay attention to like what's going on. Why are these decisions being made? So we start off. He said, Most High God tells Saul, why, I mean, Samuel, why are, you, why are you sitting there mourning and crying over Saul? Don't you know I already ripped the kingdom from him? I took it from him already. Why are you crying about it? It's not even his. Nah. Right? Then after that, you know what I'm saying? Then he looked at him and he was like, get your darn butt up. Fill your horn with oil. Why would he have to fill his horn with oil? You got to anoint the king. Right? Because remember, when Saul, when Saul came on the scene and they it was time for him to be king, pour some oil on that boy. No. I don't know why y'all use darn lotion. You use lotion? Yeah. See, I don't know. <laughs> you I use, use lotion? I use both. She can use lotion. She's white. You use lotion? It's, it's an oil way. Huh? Coconut oil. You use lotion? We know you don't use lotion. She got all that. Well, it depends on the day. You know what I'm saying? Like... This oil for this, and then this oil, this is my Monday oil. She accidentally mixed up the sleep oil and just dropped down right on the floor, knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I must have moved the body. <laughs> that's all you got to do. You know what I'm saying? That's 100% Hebrew. A little light skin, but that's 100%. You know what I'm talking about? That's how that thing work out, though. Right? Our people, you know what I'm saying? We use that oil to pour that thing. You know we darn ashy. We was out there walking around ashy. Most like that one night. You better put some oil on that. They ain't had no lotion back then. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Put the grease on your boy, bro. My mom did yeah, me. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, you, you, you wouldn't know. You, you were young. I'll tell you that thing. Start, how I started using mineral oil. You know what I'm saying? We ran out of lotion. You know what I'm saying? One day we ran. So look, let me give you the whole story. I'm about to put you out there. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My brother used to always be constipated. Always constipated. You know what I'm saying? Constantly <laughs> constipated. I ain't never even heard of constipation until I've never been constipated. Now, one time in my entire life. You lucky. But he always was like, every darn week he constipated. So my mom always had to keep mineral oil because it was a laxative. She used to give him like a teaspoon of that thing, then make us sit on the uh, sit on the toilet with him and rub his darn back. <laughs> it's, a, it's a four or five year old boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there, man, you, you know what I'm saying? Just rubbing it back. like that? That's torture. Your he, mama don't like He was a baby. I ain't do that thing. You know what I'm saying? I, that thing, is, that's a good mom. That's baby. how you get knocked out. Like, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. always... Yeah, buddy, that's exactly how it worked out too. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? We ran out of lotion. So all we had was the mineral oil. And mom was like, you going to school. You know what I'm saying? And put that thing on my elbow. So at first I was like, oh, that boo-boo. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that boo-boo juice. You know what I'm saying? that stuff on me. But bro, I one thing I used to hate about lotion, even before I knew about mineral oil, is like I when I can feel it, and then I would get ashy like throughout the day. Like, you know what I'm saying? I get like four hours into my day, then my elbow, you know what I'm saying? I'm walking around school, like, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, you know, you know what I'm saying? What you mean, bro? <laughs> you know? So you know, you gotta hide them things. You put that mineral oil on, bro. My little dirty butt didn't take a bath. I was I was shining for two days. I was looking like, I'm still not ashy. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, this will work here, you know what I'm saying? Ever since then, I was like, nah, ma, leave the lotion. Give me the mineral oil. You know what I'm saying? I've been wearing mineral oil ever since. You know what I'm saying? But all types of oil, I'll do the coconut oil. I just don't like smell. So the mineral oil, that thing ain't got no smell. So I like to be able to put on my cologne that's not mixing with none of the lotion. I hate that. You know what I'm saying? Like olive oil. Olive, olive oil. oil, that thing got a little smell to it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to put, you know what I'm saying? You got to put like something else in it. But I can't wear olive oil. Olive oil don't straight. smell like nothing to me. Yeah, no, that, thing got, that thing got a little smell to it. It's like a little. I don't know, I can't explain it, but that thing got a little... That don't know about me at all, I mean... I need something that's completely odorless. Or, that just got the smell that I'm going to wear. What, olive oil? Yeah, the olive oil I had didn't really have smell. That could, you probably use that processed stuff. <laughs> you got to get that 100% organic, you know that what I'm saying? That thing said 100% Extra organic. virgin, you know what yeah. I'm saying, olive oil. Now, that thing got to smell. You got Go ahead and smell like that. Baby! I look at some olive oil right now. I think I'm a little smart. Why do you, you think our people had to put all the frankincense and all the extra stuff into it? You know what I'm saying? That thing got to get past that little smell. It's a little smell, though. Ain't nothing that's going to kill nobody. But that ain't got like a little, like, I imagine if you wear that thing on a hot day. You know what I'm saying? That thing, yeah, I don't no, know. Somebody, that thing. Smell like somebody's cooking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that thing, you know what I'm saying? You sitting there, you know what I'm saying? Skin boiling. 
That's how I like, though. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, our people wore oil, the moral of the story. You know what I'm saying? So you got to pour the oil on them, and that's why I have. So we, now, most high God talking to him, like, Sam, what you saying? Crying over this man for? Fill your thing up with oil, because we about to go get the next king. Right? So what's the first thing after that that Samuel said? Saul will kill me if he hear about it. We have to ask ourselves, why are these decisions being made? Samuel's crying. Why? Because... The king that he had hope in, that the Most High God saw, that he saw this thing coming the whole time, that he was like, "This is a bad idea. Y'all shouldn't ask for a king." This whole time he's like, "Man, y'all." He's like, "Man, this thing is happening right before my eyes." So he crying, right? Then he like, "No, go get the next king." Then he like, "Man, well, listen, Saul gonna mess around. King, he already ripped my darn shirt. Saul gonna mess around and kill me, right?" Then let's see what the Most High God's response is. How does the Most High God comfort his men? Right? There's a lot of times the most I got be like, man, suck it up and go. But in this situation, watch, watch how you handle it. It's very important to understand. This is God doing this now. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Look, he said, take a heifer with thee and this is what you need to tell him. And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint unto me him who I name unto you. So you notice what the Most High God did. He gave him what? What did he give him just now? Instructions. Instructions. But the, the instructions were for what? What purpose? What was it in response to? to Saul killing him. So Saul, if he just went out to Jesse just flat out, Saul would have been like, oh, what you doing? Oh, you trying to find another king? Because Saul already know what's going on. Oh, you trying to find another king. So the Most High God gave him cover. He said, oh, you know what? Listen, read it again. I don't want nobody to think I'm making, making this up. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and, I, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. He said, go ahead and just tell him that you're going up there just to sacrifice. Go ahead and tell him that you're going to sacrifice to the Lord. Go ahead. What else? And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint unto me him who I name unto you. He orchestrated this entire thing, this whole sacrifice. Just to get these two people together. To give them cover. Right? Most I got it. I'm not going to put you in a position where you got to lie. Right? And I'm not going to have you sitting here scared to do it. I got it. I want a sacrifice. Call the sacrifice. And when you call the sacrifice, call everybody to it. And include Jesse. And when y'all get there, do what I tell you to do. It'll be covered. Nobody will know what's going on. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Like, it's important for us to see these things because now we learn to care. Like, a lot of things people look at in this Bible, like, a lot, of, there's, there's been studies, right, where, like, people overseas, they, they read stuff out of the Bible and they act like, they put, like, a Quran on the front of it. They, you know what I'm saying? They took the, take the, the Holy Bible, they write Quran over it and they put it in the Quran cover and they open it up and they be like, they go to be Christian and be like, oh, look, you remember when, when, when Allah said this. And then they'll read from the Bible and making these people think it's the Quran. And the people be like, oh, yeah, the Muslims, they're so violent. Our God would never do anything or say anything like that. Meanwhile, they reading from their God, supposedly. Right? It's because we don't know the character of our God. Most people look like if I, if I came up and I was like, okay, look. Um, I don't want Randy to know that I'm taking Bishop from him. Right? I don't want, I don't want, I don't want Randy to know that I'm about to take Bishop. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a whole dog meeting at my house. Everybody bring their dog. But really, I just want Randy's dog there. Right? People look at that and be like, man, that's darn sneaky. But that's God's character because he's looking at, okay, what is the purpose? In his wisdom, like not everybody is this why. We, we do it for our own selfish reasons and all that different stuff. But the most high God is looking like, I want a purpose. I care about you. I don't want you walking around here scared. Right? So I'm going to cover you and I'm going to make sure that you have something to go with. Here goes this sacrifice, right? Now you have the sacrifice. Now that you have the sacrifice, call Jesse there. Watch when Jesse get there. Watch this. Whole plan going. Whole plan going to come together. Cause this is God. He thinking like seven, eight, nine steps ahead of everybody. He looking like man. I already know how this thing going to play out. I already know how everybody going to react, right? He has to think like that. We can never think like the man. Watch this. And Samuel did that which which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. 
Mm -hmm. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. and, he sac and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when they were come that he took Eliab. And he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Right? He looked on his son. He was like, Oh, that's the one there. He looked, he looked. Now that's a good looking boy. He's probably tall. You know what I'm saying? A little muscular. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's a good looking boy. He's like, Surely that's the one. What did he say now? Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. He said, now this is the Lord's anointed. What did the Most High God say? But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. He is like, don't look at it how pretty he is. Also, don't look at how tall he is. He is like, I refuse that one. I already checked. Oh, no, God looking like, I already checked him out. I know what you're talking about. No, not that one. I refuse him. I'm looking at the man's heart. Find the next one. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And then it's another one, Abinadab. Right? Let's hear about him. Neither has the Lord chosen this. Chosen this. Mm -hmm. So the Most High God said, no, nah, not him either. Right? Go to the next one. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Mm -hmm. Again. Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. So he just passing all these sons by, passing them by. Most high God was like, No, nope, not, not, not any of those. But. And Samuel said, What do you think about, boy? Who God gonna pick? Who God gonna pick? Which king God gonna pick? You don't know? You sure you don't know? Alright, you're gonna be mad when you find out. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? He said, Is this everybody you got? I feel like we just ran through all your sons. Do you have any more sons? Is what he asked him? Let's hear about it. And he said, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he keeps the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. Okay. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and with all... What do you mean when they say he was ruddy? Uh, light skin. Light skin, that was a light skin boy. You know what I'm talking about? Light brown. That thing say ready. You, ever, you know what I'm saying? You know what they call a light skin girl? What they call a light skin girl? Light skin. What's another name? What's what else they call it? Uh, the inner south. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you about to say something inappropriate. You need to. You you might you you should be ashamed of your darn tail. You need to cut that thing off. What they call a light skin girl? Redbone. Call them red bone. No, that wasn't gonna be your darn second game. You need to cut that out. Just talk about some second game. Yeah, you see the little Facebook page, this little whippersnap from me. In the picture. You know what I'm saying? In the picture. You know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. See, so, you know what I'm saying? They call them red bone. Because, you know what I'm saying? If we look at their skin, and, you know what I'm saying? It has like a reddish tone to it. They light. Well, ruddy, that means red. So they say that boy was ruddy. They call him a red bone. Not in the way that we call women a red bone. They just looking like he's light skinned. His countenance was, he was a fair, you know what I'm saying? He was a light skinned person. So look at it. Watch it. If you look up a ruddy horse, it'd be like the the brown, reddish brown ones. Mm -hmm. uh, like like a penny, almost like a shiny penny. Mm -hmm. uh, where was I? Okay, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance. And that boy was pretty too. Good to look. You know what I'm talking about? That boy. You ever seen one of them pretty light skinned boy? That was, that was David. King yeah. David? That boy was a pretty light skinned boy. Like Elijah. Yeah, that boy was like Elijah. You know what I'm talking about? That's just gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? You walk up in the room, everybody just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Even a guy, like, that's a good looking brother. You know what I'm saying? You gotta got hit him off with something. Yeah, he got that. He got that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta say something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was King David there. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Hold on. Uh, let me see. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him for it. This is he. Right? So he get the youngest one. Right? He, he wasn't even in the house. Didn't nobody even expect for him to be the one. You know what I'm saying? Then he come in. He's like, okay, yeah, that's him. You know what I'm saying? That's him. Let's see. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brother. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Mm -hmm. For the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul said, An evil spirit from who? From the Lord. An evil spirit from who? The Lord. We got to recalculate, right? We've been taught a whole lot of stuff, like the devil doing this, devil. The devil is being sent from God. 
It said an evil spirit from the Lord. Right? Quite frankly, a lot of the troubles that we have, a lot of the stuff that we struggle with, we can look at that as directly from the Lord, not from the devil. The devil came because of he came from the Lord. He was sitting up there like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just been chilling. And the most high God said, you know what? Have you considered my servant Randy? My servant Danielle, my servant Anak, my servant, uh, you know what I'm saying? My sleeping niece. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Have you, have you considered all this? All right, we keep going. Watch this. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubles you. Mm -hmm. Let our Lord now command your servants which are before you to seek out a man who is cunning, who is a cunning player on a heart. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon you that he shall play with his hand and you shall be well. What verse is this? 16. 16, keep going. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Watch out. Look, look how the Most High God orchestrate this whole thing. He just set David up, right? Then he sent, he put the spirit of God on David. Then at that same time, he took the spirit of God from David and gave him, I mean, I'm, uh, took the spirit of God from Saul and gave him what? A troubling spirit. A troubling spirit, an evil spirit, right? So he put the evil spirit inside of Saul, took the good spirit, the spirit of God from Saul, and then put that in David, right? So now where does that leave Saul? Saul's struggling now. So then Saul's crying out, and then he was told, you know what? Find a man who can play the harp well. He'll make you feel better. Now watch who this man happens to be. Watch this. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain, and a mighty battle. What are the darn chances? I've seen a son of who? Jesse. Well, Samuel just came from Jesse's house. Looking at all of Jesse's sons, of which the last son, who was out keeping the sheep, came in. That boy was beautiful. Then he said, you know what? That's my boy. Poured the oil on him, and the Spirit of God came on him. Spirit of God left Saul. Evil spirit came on the Saul. Saul started to be troubled. He said, one of his servants was like, you know what you could do? You could probably listen to some music. You probably should find somebody that got some good music. He was like, hmm, good idea. Then one of the other servants was like, I know a boy. Jesse's boy. You mean Jesse who just got the spirit of God that just left Saul? Let's hear how this is. Most High God just doing this the whole time. Okay, let's move this piece here, move that piece here. Whole thing got to play out the way he wanted to. Watch this, keep going. And a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is with him. Mm -hmm. Therefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David your son, which is with the sheep. Look how easy that was. Right? So now David, who was just anointed to be what? King. Is now about to be right in the same house as who? Saul. The king. Saul is currently the king. David just got anointed to be king. Saul don't know anything about this yet. Right? Now they right next door. Not right next door. They in the same room now. Right? A lot of times, you know what I'm saying, people are trying to make it. You know what we need? We just need like that, that, that introduction. You know what I'm saying? Like just... I mean, just, you know what I'm saying, just introduce me to the man so that way he can put me on, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to make it in my rap career, you know what I'm saying, you know how this boy be doing, you know what I'm saying, so it's like, just put me in the same room with him, just let me get a chance, right, most of our guys said, don't even worry about it, I'll get you there, we'll make this thing happen sooner or later, alright, let's keep going, what up? Y'all gotta excuse him, he's somebody, you know what I'm saying, around here, we ain't got no allergies, 100%. And Jesse took a donkey laden with bread. And a bottle of wine and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. Mm -hmm. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Mm -hmm. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and prayed with his hand, mm -hmm. and played with his hand. Mm -hmm. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Mm -hmm. What verse is that? 23. That's the end of it? Yeah. Uh, let's go to 17. We ain't got to read the whole thing in 17. Let's go to, uh, let's jump down. Like, like verse 8. Excuse me. I should have more notebooks up there somewhere. This first Samuel chapter 17, verse, uh, let's jump on down to 18. Read about Goliath. 
Ja, und dann war... It is 1 Samuel, verse 17, chapter 17, verse 18. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Mm -hmm. Now Saul and they all, now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. Mm -hmm. and David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him, and he came to the trench. Mm -hmm. And the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Mm -hmm. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array and army against army. Mm -hmm. And David left his carriage and the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. All right, so he came to his brother because, remember, Pops was telling him to bring stuff to his brother. So he came and he saluted his brother. Like, yeah, what's going on? Y'all all right? Because his brother's fighting in the war. All right, now watch this. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion of the Philistines of, G of Gath. So this is a big old dude that came up with the Philistines, right? And when he came up, then what he said, watch this. Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Mm -hmm. and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be. That the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, his daughters, and his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. Right. So he's looking at all the people of Israel scared of this big dude because he's a giant. It's Goliath, right? So he's a giant. So Goliath, the call there, he's standing like in the middle of the, of, the, of the battle, the middle of the fighting field. He's like, "Yo, whoever wanted can get it. I'll take anybody out here one on one. Let's do it." Right. So we honorable people, we like, okay, who's going to take the, the head up with him? You know what I'm saying? Like, who's going to do it? So everybody kind of nerds, like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? That boy big, you know what I'm saying? Then the king put out a message like, listen, if you do it, whoever takes him and takes him out, man, I'll, get, I'll make your family rich. I'll take your family out the hood. I'll make sure everybody good. And you can, have, you can marry my daughter. So in other words, you become instantly royalty. You know what I'm saying? Like, you become royalty if you do this. So everybody kind of nervous. David walk up, he don't know nothing about what's going on. David just walk up like, yeah, Pop told me, deliver some stuff to my older. Remember, David the youngest, just deliver some stuff to my older brother. Here goes some food, you know what I'm saying? You good, here goes some cheese, you good? Everybody good? All right, everybody good. So he salute his brothers. Then all the people of Israel like, man, you know what I'm saying? No, you know what I'm saying? You hear about Goliath? Man, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, but ain't nobody stepping out. You know how people be running their mouth, but ain't nobody actually getting out there? That's what's happening. So let's see how David felt about that thing. David light skin. And you, you know what I'm saying, normally you got a light-skinned boy. You know what I'm saying? You know, a little soft. You know what I'm saying? A little soft ain't really, you know what I'm saying? It's that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can't do nothing about it. A little soft. David was different. You know what I'm saying? Watch David. David about that. He had dark skin at heart. Uh, uh, what was that? Which other one? Okay. Uh, should be about verse 19, 18, I mean 19, 20 maybe. <coughs> yeah. It's 1 Samuel okay. 17, verse 20. Verse 20. Oh, wait, no. I'm on uh, 23. No, way further. Not like and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to this man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Mm -hmm. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? So look how David responded. David looked like... What's wrong with y'all? You know what I'm saying? What y'all what y'all scared of him for? What's gonna happen to the man that take him out? This uncircumcised, you know what I'm saying? We was all circumcised. This uncircumcised, y'all. Oh, please. Watch him. Keep going. He ain't, he ain't done yet. Watch him keep going. David ain't playing with these boys. 
Wrong and the people job. answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that kills him. Uh huh. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the man. What did your brother told him? And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why do you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart, mm -hmm. for you are come down that you might see the battle. Mm -hmm. He's like, Man, you take your butt back home. You're supposed to be keeping the darn sheep. Who you left the sheep with? I know how you are. You always trying to be in somebody's business. You're trying to see what's going on. Stop being darn nosy. Take your butt home. Remember, you got to think about it. You're an older darn brother. You in the battle, kind of getting your butt whooped. And you know you scared to go out there. And then your younger brother come out here like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going to happen to the dude? To kill out this uncertain, disrespecting the dude that you know will whoop everybody out here. Like, here's your younger brother. He embarrassing you. He about to get to talk and get y'all all beat up. You know what I'm saying? Then you like, man, shut up. So he's trying to get in front of it. Like, man, shut up. Take your butt home. Go keep the sheep. You know what I'm saying? Because you it's your younger brother. You, if I can't take him, I know my little brother can't take him. You know what I'm saying? So he's just trying to like, man, shut up. Take your butt back home. Watch this, though. And David said, what have I done now? You know what I'm saying? Like, what I, I do? Let's hear about it. Is there not a cause? Uh-huh. And he turned from him towards another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former man. Mm -hmm. and when the so in other words, he asked the same question. Can I ask y'all, what's going to happen to the man who take out this uncircumcised Gentile? Right? Then they answer him the same way. You know what I'm saying? Saul going to hook you up. You know what I'm saying? So if you do it, Saul, Saul's going to hook you up. You know what I'm saying? Marry his daughter. Let's hear about it. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. Mm -hmm. And he sent for him. Uh huh. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. He said, don't let anybody out here be scared. What else? Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. I'll take him. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. All right? He said, Saul looking at him like, David, boy, you be playing the heart for me. You just a young buck. This boy been fighting since he was younger than you. And you trying to get out, you ain't never been in a fight. Why David say? Because that's basically what he's telling you. You ain't never been in no fight, boy. Why David? And David going to tell him, oh, I've been in some stuff. Why that? And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. He said, I killed a bear and a lion. Why that? Keep going. This... Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. So tell me which one of y'all killed the lion and the bear. Oh, okay. Well, he about to be the same way. David out there talking big mess. Right? Big mess. All right, let's see what happens then. And David said, moreover, the Lord has delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Mm -hmm. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Mm -hmm. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. All right, everybody nervous. You, you can tell. He looked at the young boy. He's like, look, man, just get this man something. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Here go my helmet. Here, take my breastplate. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of put him all his armor. So David, he's a he young. You know what I'm saying? So David drowning in his grown man. Remember, Saul was tall. The book said we read yesterday. Saul, it said that he was he was shoulders above everybody. So his shoulder was people where people head was. He was a big dude. So he gave him his own armor. So you can imagine David's little self, he just drowning in a man armor, right? He tell him, all right, go ahead and get him then. You know what I'm saying? You can get him. Saul don't think he can get him. You know what I'm saying? Saul just like, well, the little boy got heart. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, leave it on so hard a little man. He about to tear your butt up. But go ahead and get out there. Right? Watch what David said. David a real one. Watch this. I forgot about this thing. Boy, David a real one. Watch this. And he also armed him with a coat of mail. Mm -hmm. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. Mm -hmm. For he had and for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these. I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. What is it? What it mean when he say I can't go with these because I haven't proved them? I haven't tested them. I haven't tested them. I haven't, I haven't fought in these. Like, at least give me some, you know what I'm saying? Give me something I didn't, you know what I'm saying, moved around in before. I can't just jump out here with some brand new stuff. It's too heavy. I don't, I've never tested it. I've never tried these out before. You know what I'm going to take instead? Let's see. Watch this. And David put them off him 
and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. He took his staff in his hands and he chose how many? Five smooth stones out of the brook. I want y'all to remember exactly how many he took out. How many? Five. Then the next coming weeks, don't forget that number, five. Five stones, right? We ain't gonna talk about it today, but we'll talk about it. And put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. Uh-huh. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistines. So he has a staff in one hand, right? And he has five smooth stones, put them in his bag, and he has a sling, right? Let's hear about it. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. Mm -hmm. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. Mm -hmm. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Mm -hmm. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that you come to me with staves? Mm -hmm. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said unto David, Come to me, and I will give, my, give your flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Mm -hmm. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword. And with a spear, with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, mm -hmm. whom you have defied. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand, and I will smite you, and take your head from you, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, mm -hmm. and, to the wind, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Mm -hmm. And all his assembly said, shall know, that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Right, so the whole time that David is out there, he's not just out there trying to be prideful. He's not just out there trying to, you know what I'm saying, show off like, oh, I'm with the business, I can scrap whoever I want to scrap, I, you know, I can kill the bear and the lion. Whole time he out there trying to show the people, oh, this is all God. Remember, right before this happened, what came over David? Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. This is not just a normal, like, oh, yeah, I got confidence in myself. This is the Spirit of God moving in David. Spirit of God got him out there. That's why his brother don't recognize it. He's like, man, what you, you know what I'm saying? This stuff, what you, what are you crazy boy out here? Go, to, go teach him the darn rabbits. Goliath, like, who is this light skinned pretty boy came out here with? Goliath ain't playing with this boy. Like, if you don't get your light skinned <laughs> self, you know what I'm saying? Little, you know what I'm saying? I'll knock you out. Watch what happens. It's most high God moving. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took there and took from there a stone and slang it and, the, and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone so he to his forehead. Hold on, so he grabbed it, had the stone, pulled it out, swept that thing around, slanged it, and it hit him where? In his forehead. Square in his darn forehead. Right? Boop, boop. Watch this. That the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. That thing said, sunk into that thing. Then that boy it went like that and he fell on what? On his face. So that thing, it didn't, it didn't push him backwards. That thing hit. It's a big dude. Hit, sunk into his forehead. He stopped. You know what I'm saying? You can just imagine that thing. He just stopped and then just boom, fell right to his face. You know what I'm saying? Man dead. Watch this. But just to make sure, watch what David did. So David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone and mm -hmm. smoked the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Okay. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took took his sword uh -huh. and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. So he took he took Goliath's sword, drew it out, and then cut his head off. <clears throat> Keep in mind everything that we see in David do, because all this stuff gonna play out later. All this stuff gonna have everything gonna have a cause and effect. We see in David do some big stuff. Excuse me, some big stuff. But even the stuff that he doing, as good as it is, it has its own consequences. Right? So we're going to see later on how this has a, a negative consequence for David. But watch. Keep going. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Mm -hmm. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until you come unto the valley and to the gates of Ekron. Mm -hmm. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way of Shahari, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. All right, so this is Matthew chapter uh, 21. It's Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 
Therefore say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. What does that sound like? Ripped from. Kingdom was just ripped from who? So. And now we starting to see that it's given on the who? David. Right? Because David is bearing fruit. Spirit of the Most High God was taken away from, from Saul. And then it was given to David. Then all of a sudden we see David bearing fruit immediately. He looking like, okay, for sure, I'll take this war. Saul don't even realize it. Saul just like, all right, yeah, because he gave him his honor. Uh, I mean, his armor. Saul don't even realize what's happening right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Saul don't even see that. It's like, he giving him his honor. He's about to give him his daughter. All these different things. And he don't realize that all this stuff is transferring the kingdom. God says one thing, like, okay, I'm going to rip the kingdom for you. And it don't happen immediately. And so it's easy, just like us, just same thing that we're going to see what's happening to Saul. Just because he didn't see it immediately, he don't realize everything that's happened as a consequence. Right? He don't even realize he's sitting here transferring his kingdom to another person. Because he's not paying attention. Right? Keep going. Watch it. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. Mm -hmm. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. It's going to do what? Grind him to powder. So we got to ask ourselves a question. Do we want to be broken? Or do we want to be ground to powder? What sounds better, Randy? <laughs> Neither one of them things sound good, right? You're like, well, I got to choose. But I mean, you just got to choose from one of the two. Which one do you think? Just rather be broken. I mean, I take your arm. I just snap it like, Psh. you know what I'm talking about? That thing can be fixed. You know what I'm saying? Put that thing in a sling. You'll be all right, right? Now, take somebody's arm and grind that thing to powder. How many times you seen that thing go in a sling? That's not happening. Right? That's a choice that we all got to make. That's the decisions that we all got to kind of think about when we're reading through these books. That's the, that's, these are the decisions that these people are going through. These are the decisions that David has to make. This is the decision that, uh, that uh, Saul are having to make. Right? We can look at their decision. We can learn from them. Right? To put ourselves in a position. Everybody's going to have to do something. Like, everybody got to die. Ain't no way to get around. Everybody got to die. Well, who's going to be resurrected on the life versus who's going to be resurrected on to... Um, Damnation, internal damnation, or internal uh, condemnation. Condemnation is what I'm looking for. All right? Any questions? Nope. Your dog is all right, man. <laughs> Goodness well, gracious. Not, my not, dog is not vicious. <coughs> my dog is a sweetheart. I'm not worried about my dog. Well, you should be. No. What are you trying to say? Your dog get at my dog? You get at That boy, turn him. He has a little damn dog. He ain't trying to get toe up. Bishop's been playing around with check hands before. No. He'll be all right. <laughs> My dog get checkmate too. What you talking about? Any questions? <laughs> All right, let's pray out.